have time to drink it. Oh, Bob! The uh, part one sergeant's results are in. Gary got a pass, a good one. 96%. My Gary expects it the time we're giving him to study. He's got the easy part out of the way at least. Yeah, I'll tell him that. <laughs> Yes, that's 5-3. The key holder is a Mrs Chatham. Now, she says that she'll wait for you outside, but she's got very specific... Ins Can you just hold on a minute? Hold you got anything, Jim? Uh, yeah, I've got a 15-year-old Misper girl. All right, thank you. Yeah, she's got very specific instructions. The youngster here, he can take you back to me. Can he? Well, of course. Oh, well, well, I've never found Sarge. 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 Where's 358? Late, Sarge. Right. Well, when Gary turns up, he's with you on 8-4, OK? Sarge. Ref's at 6. Uh, Narika, 8-5, ref's at 5. Sarge. Stephen, Mike, Sierra, 1, ref's at 6. Nick, 3 beat, ref's at 5. George and Cathy, process patrol, all right? Ref's at 6. Nick, there's a young girl, 15, gone missing at that address. <laughs> all right. The mother says she's unhappy. Uh, Narika, I want you to swing by the superstore car park. There's a uh, con artist working his way there, yeah? Oh, good to see you, Gary. Sorry, Sarge. Any reason why all of these people can get here on time and you can't? No, Sarge. Right. Fortunately, they don't assess uh, timekeeping in part one. Congratulations. Yes! Well, you got it. Oh, oh, nice one. Yeah. How much did you get, Gary? 96%. How much oh, no questions about the big hand and the little hand, then. <laughs> uh, you're going to get the old ones when you go for Chief Inspector. <laughs> Good news about Gary, Sarge. Yeah, he's over the moon. Yeah, it won't do us any harm, either. Gary doing so well. Someone young and bright, you mean? Now, if he makes it the sergeant, the pounds of beer are going to like it. Very good on paper. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? Driver's surname. No, I think it's great, the uh, opportunities we provide. I just think it's a pity that most people are going to view it as Gary McCann, the statistic. The How about you? Sarge? Or someone like you, watching him shoot up the ladder? No, I've no regrets. What's what happened then, Ty? Well, as soon as the bloke took his eyes off me, I had him. Yeah? Mind you, he still took a couple of places oh, back just in case. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah just in case he fell home. Gary? Oh, yeah. Sarge? Ninety-six percent, eh? That's a good mark. But listen, I don't want you resting on your laurels just yet. Oh, no, Sarge, you didn't mean like that. No, I know, no, you're just holding your own. The fact that you're going through these exams means that you're no longer just one of the lads. Sarge, look, you're good at law and procedures, but I can't say this often enough. If you're going to make it through parts two and three, you've got to start thinking about what it takes to be a team leader, not just a member of the team. And that's not a criticism, because we all have our strengths and weaknesses. But, for instance, what would you do if a rape victim came in right now and accused Inspector Munro of being the rapist. <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, that's one of the scenarios they're using for part two, the role play. And you have to decide what to do, just you. Well, I suppose that I no, can't... No, 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 I'm not testing you, and that's not my point. My point is, that's how you have to start thinking, right? It's the way the system's organised. Pushes people up the ladder too fast. Tony, you're the one who's always said you never wanted to be sergeant. It's nothing personal, Gary. Good luck to you. But in general, it's bad for business. Look, someone's got to do the job. Really, yeah, aren't it? We agree. Both got the wider interests of the force in mind. 8-4 receiving. Go ahead, June. 25 Gatley House on the Lark Hill. Suspects on. Informant to Mrs Riddick. On way. No sign of forced entry. Your two ladies gone. Which way? You won't catch him around here. He knows it too well. Do you know the man? Of course I know him. Is that nutter they put next door? What's his name? Gordon. Marcus Gordon. You should know all this. Some other coppers took him to St Mark's when he did that. What happened, Mrs Riddick? He had his arm in my window before I shut it on him. He was trying to get in. He's done it before. Can you give us a description? Dark fella, big, dirty. You should know all this. Long hair, short hair, age? Short hair. 20, 22, I don't know. What I do know is try and have a conversation with him and he gets violent and abusive. He's been diagnosed. All right, we'll look into it. He should never have been given that flat. Look at it. He's supposed to be in hospital. If he comes back, give us another call. Is that it? Got a time being. Thank you, Mrs. Riddick. Hey, do you remember that? 
Mike dealt with it six, seven weeks back. Nah. Marcus Gordon, black guy, schizophrenic, hearing voices, I'm the worst. Give me time, and I. Mike said he was desperate to get out this block. Hated it. That's why he burned down his flat. So? So why did he come back? Oi! Good, get out. Well, let's find him first, Gary. Then you can ask him yourself. Before the weekend, please. Sir. How did Gary take the good news? Oh, he's pleased. If he does that well on the other parts, he'll get accelerated promotion. We won't see him for dust. If? You still have your doubts? Well, he's bright enough, he's keen enough. But? But he's always been a borderline case. I think another year on the beat would help. Whatever his exam says. That's the secure unit. Not very secure, is it? Dr. Davis, how can I help? It's about one of your patients, Marcus Gordon. Oh? Well, what's he done? Harassing his neighbours. Don't know where he is, do you? <laughs> He's meant to be on the secure unit, isn't he? Shall we go through here? We let him out on leave to visit his grandmother. Or to visit his dogs, to be precise. His grandmother's looking after them. Isn't he a little too unstable for that? I would have thought so after the fire. He's very close to his dogs. I thought it important, from a therapeutic point of view, not to keep him from them at this time. Because one of them's gone missing. Dog and Ernie together. Marcus was due back last night. When I called, his grandmother said he'd already left. I did intend to inform the police if he still hadn't appeared by this evening. Is, uh, Marcus a danger to anyone, Doctor? He shouldn't be, if he takes his medication. His neighbours said that he was violent and abusive. He has been, in the past. And I am aware of the friction with his neighbours. Our concern has always been his relationship with his grandmother. She's a very powerful woman, completely dominates Marcus. That's why he was given the flat. Is there anything else you can tell us that might locate Marcus before he gets in more serious trouble? Any particular people or places that you might have a fixation about? I couldn't say. Well, could you give us his grandmother's address? I'll get it. Sorry, mate. Mrs. Gordon, we'd like a word about your grandson, Marcus. Has he been arrested then? No. He's uh, walked out of hospital. Good. Them doctors are drug dealers. Marcus may be weak, but they just make him weaker. Uh, may we come in, please? He's not here. Have you seen him? He was here yesterday to see the dogs. He isn't allowed to have them in hospital. And Dallas ran off. She was pining as much as he was. Did he go to look for her? I expect so. Well, do you know where he went? Where he might have looked? No. That's his business. Was he calm when you last saw him or agitated? A man is entitled to feel agitated when he loses his flat, his dog, and people feed him drugs day and night with your help. But he's not entitled to go and harass his neighbours. Harass them! He was around there earlier, being abusive and violent, they said. So they said. They're liars, both of them, and not for the first time. Mrs Gordon, what happened between Marcus and his neighbours? Social services said he was ill when he lost his job. But he just needed time to pick himself up. Not hospital, time. He should have had that here, but no, they give him a flat. What about the neighbours, Mrs Gordon? Branston! Back in there. Stay in the kitchen. Is that his other dog? Enough chat. I've got things to do. If Marcus does come back again, Mrs. Gordon, you will call us. I will not. He is a grown man. He can call you himself if he wants to. Care in the community needs a community that cares, right? Starting a campaign? No, just keeping an open mind. What for? Gordon's dangerous, that's what everyone's telling us. Even his grandma. She also said he had cause. Cause to be dangerous? No, to be upset. He's just lost his dog, his job, his flat. His marbles. I think the grandmother knew more than she was telling us. So do I, Gary. But that doesn't help us find him, does it? Now that's what we should be doing. What's up? 
Oh, Steve's just giving him a hard time. Mike, do you remember that fire in the Larkhill six weeks ago? Yeah, why? Gary wants to broaden his knowledge of mental illness. Did they confirm it as arson? Well, the fire brigade said so. The council didn't want Gordon charged. Too vulnerable. Were his neighbours there, the Riddicks? Yeah, they called us. Said he was trying to burn them down. General consensus was he was trying to get rehoused. Because it was arson, he just got sectioned hey, again. Did yeah, Gordon yeah. strike you as being dangerous? Go ahead, June. Right guy with the dog trying to burn himself out. It's Not dangerous towards us, but the lot's could kill his neighbours and be dead. What was he after? Marcus? Marcus? Are you in here? Marcus? Where have you been? We were worried about you. You got some unfinished business around here. Well, if you don't tell me, how am I gonna know? Next door says you tried to break in. <laughs> Take it easy, just calm down. That's good. Let's assume there are two sides to this. Is there? Okay. Maybe we can do something. Help you sort it out. But you gotta come with me. Okay? Slowly. That's good. Take it easy. In your own time. Gary! Take it easy, we're Marcus. Fine. We're fine, Tony. We're fine, aren't we, Marcus? No! We're fine, aren't we, Marcus? Marcus! No! Nice one, Gary. Deridic, can we talk about this somewhere else? Where are you going? I want you to hear this. What's the point of calling the police if you can't handle it? Mr. Riddick, he's a lunatic. I think we should do It's your responsibility to lock him up. Actually, the treatment of psychiatric patients is not our job. Treatment? He attacked my wife. I understood there was a disturbance, but no one's mentioned an assault until now. Please, Mr. Riddick. He would have done. And he's still out there, isn't he? Gordon jumped from a second story balcony. There wasn't much my officers could do about it. If they got there a bit quicker, they could. What kind of state was he in? He was in the driving seat. He had something on his mind, Sarge. He seemed to respond when I said we could sort it out. He jumped off a second floor balcony. I'm not saying he's 100% rational. So what was it, this thing on his mind? He didn't get that far, Sarge. Well, what do you think? What's your opinion? He's got something to sort out with those neighbours. If we wait, he'll come back. I think he wants help. I'm sure he does. But it's not a very efficient use of resources, is it? No, you can swing by from time to time, but I can't have you there just sitting around. 
Doctor, what is the full SP on this mental patient from the Lark Hill? I just had his neighbour bending my ear. Ex-neighbour, Marcus absconded from the hospital. We're hoping to take him back before he provokes a serious incident. So he's already sectioned? Well, it's the same old story. We know we've got a schizophrenic out there having a bad day, but no one's prepared to tell us how bad. Have you managed to speak to anyone at all? The hospital doctor. She's been cagey. The social worker won't answer my calls. Right. We'll see about that. That's the difference between us, Gary. I'd have jumped on him first and then done my talking. I was trying not to jump on him. Oh, he got in first, did he? Did you catch him? No. They're having a chat and then he dropped out of sight. He jumped because you put the wind up him. It was a very technical negotiation situation. Apparently not my fault, eh? Sergeant Crow was looking for you. Inspector Munro wants a word. Oh, I'll eat your chips. No, you won't. He wants to see the pair of you. Given that he's literally slipped through our fingers, I think it's doubly incumbent on us to find him, don't you? Yes, sir. Sir. The approved social worker, like everyone else in this matter, seems to blame us. According to him, if we charged the neighbours with racial harassment, none of this would have happened. Racial harassment? First we've heard of it. Well, the Riddicks have been provoking Gordon. No. Gordon's grandmother is the key. She completely dominates him. According to the social worker, Gordon wouldn't take a piss without her say-so. Is all this really necessary? Inspector Monroe thinks so. And Sergeant Cryer also said he didn't want us wasting time, remember? Now look, there's something going on with Gordon and that neighbour and I want to find out. Is that all right with you? Just fine. What you want? I've seen Marcus. He seems to think he's got a bone to pick with his neighbours. We thought you might know why. Marcus will have to learn to fight his own fight. I've told him that before now. That's not an answer, Mrs. Gordon. Do you know why Marcus keeps on going back to see the Riddicks? That's not your business. Where is he? Where's the dog, Mrs. Gordon? What are you doing? Get away. Has he been here? He's been back to collect the dog, hasn't he? What of it? You know where he's gone, don't you? The man has to sort things out for himself. Things? What things? Have you been cheering him up to tackle the Riddicks? People only gonna push him around so long as he lets them. That's Riddick, isn't it? What's he carrying? Stop the car and I'll run through. I'll go around the back. Who called you? Has Marcus Gordon been here? You're too late again. Stay right there! What were you carrying? And don't say nothing. Oh, you'll start on me now. Are you all right, Frank? Oi! Riddick! Is this blood? Someone took a hammering. No sign of Gordon. Well, he started it. Why? An Englishman's got a right to defend his home. Oh, do you live out here in the street, do you? Not by taking this to someone's head, he doesn't. Hammering someone with a piece of wood is a serious offence. If Marcus Gordon wants to press charges... Oh, the one keeps saying what happened. Oh, believe him instead of us. Oh, us, is it? Why did you get physical between you and Marcus that night? Was it the fire? That's the fire brigade. That black wacko set fire to his flat, and if he says different, he's lying. Why would he say different? Because he says all sorts of it, gibberish. You can't trust him as a witness. Witness to what, Mrs. Riddick? Witness to nothing. Marcus Gordon doesn't seem to think so. No? Well, I won't lose any sleep over it. His grandmother's not going to tell us any more. And even if we do find him, they are right. Make a crack with this. Maybe. He'd be better off back in hospital, Gary, getting some care. Yeah, like you said, Tony, let's find him first, then we can ask. Look, all right. I know Gordon's out to lunch, but he still deserves a fair shake. That neighbour beat him up, and we should do something about it. And if Reddick had a hand in that fire... If. I don't care whether Gordon makes a bad witness or not. That's down to the CPS. But I'm not dropping this one, Tony. With a stick? Like a dog? No one does that to my grandson. Mrs. Gordon, we need to find Marcus. He went round there because you made him, and he took a beating. He needs to set things right. By assaulting someone, so that then he gets arrested. Is that what you want? I don't see you arrest his neighbour. Marcus tried to assert himself, like you told him to, and he failed. Now, what's that going to do for his self-respect? But he tried. He can't do it your way. He needs help. From you? 
If Marcus knows something will justify Riddick's arrest, we'll arrest him. Tonight's assault should be enough. Assault? Get him to tell you about the fire. What about the fire? He saw Riddick do it! Marcus was sitting in the dark when that vermin climbed over the balcony with a can of petrol. He didn't see Marcus until he'd started the flames. But he knows Marcus saw him, clear as I can see you. But why didn't he tell someone? Sometimes he can't trust his own mind. Where is he, Mrs. Gordon? He'll come home when he's ready. Willie. Right now, Marcus has got a lot on his shoulders. And if he's out there thinking there really is no justice, then we need to find him quickly. You could try Gatley Park. He worked there before. Before he became ill. Sierra Oscar from 84 receiving. Go ahead, Gary. Could you tell 9 2 that we're on our way to Gatley Park? Probable assault victim Marcus Gordon may be there and injured. Yeah, I've got that, Gary. We're in Munster Road. We'll come down the north side of the park and assist. Receive, Sergeant. Marcus! Marcus! Take a look over there. Five eight ambulance required. One male unconscious. Go through the motions, Gary. Wasting your time. Why well, wasn't an overdose? We could have done something. Dead. Suffocate himself, Sarge. Kick something if you think it'll help. I could kick the crap out of Riddick. All right. What happened? Gordon saw Riddick start the fire in his flat, and that's what this is all about. I should nick him for murder. Yeah, maybe you should, Gary, but you can't. Look, it doesn't matter what we do, these things happen. But what you've got to do is still try and do our part right. Which I didn't! Yes, you did. Right, you sized up the situation, you followed your judgement, the man is dead. But that's not your fault. At least we know why it happened. And that is down to Gary McCann. Yeah, but that's no comfort to him, Sarge. No, but it's got to be for you. Because that's all you've got. <laughs>